Excuse me. Careful, sir. I think you're going to lose this one. Thank you. Any luck? No, no sign of him. What do you look like again? You've got a photograph. Well, I got bored. <laughs> which, as you can see from the diagram, is fairly straightforward. Now, the lens is hidden in the spine and is wide-angle with an autofocus, right? Now, because it's crystal-controlled, we get a stabilised frequency with no outside distortion, interference or signal fluctuation, OK? Right, now, it's got the usual scanning frequency of 15.73 MHz and an audio output of minus 5 dBs. But the real beauty of this thing is, is that we can use it with the RAL2000 we spoke about earlier to automatically control and prioritise up to 99 cameras. So, any questions? Uh, could you just go back over that last bit? Sure. From where? Uh, well, um, from just after you said, good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was an hour and a half ago. Really? <laughs> it's just flown by, hasn't it? <laughs> Didn't you understand any of it? Well, it was very technical, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> right? OK. Let's see if we can simplify this for you a little. Now, here is Mr. Microphone. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Microphone. He's a very small little chap, doesn't he? But although he's very small, he is very, very powerful. And he can talk to all his friends up to 300 yards away. <gasps> but we can't leave Mr. Microphone out in the open where he can be seen, can we? No, we have to find a home for him. We'll have to find you one as well if you carry on like this. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, Mr. Drummond, I, I was just teaching them about... Teaching? How the hell are they supposed to learn anything if you treat them like children? And why we need all this electronic mumbo-jumbo, God alone knows. Do go and sit down, please. All right, you lot, now pay attention. I want to talk to you about the continuing surveillance in Hater Street. Rarely have I encountered such gross stupidity and ineptitude. I'm particularly surprised at you, Flint. I tend to expect better. What in blazes were you thinking of? Dexter's actions never cease to amaze me but I will not have you emulating his incompetence. Do you understand me? Oh, for goodness sake, stop sniffling. Stop it. Stop it! Here! Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> now, what I... Please. <laughs> what I don't understand is how you could spend all your time watching 49 Hater Street when you were supposed to be watching 59. It's an easy mistake to make, sir. So it would appear but I'm not prepared to tolerate such sloppy work. For goodness sake, you were supposed to be watching a couple in their early 40s. Yes, sir. Well, didn't it seem odd to you that all the occupants that you photographed were over 70? Actually, it did, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have thought that the conversations you picked up on the phone taps might have given you a clue. Not really, sir. You see, we thought Meals on Wheels might have been a code. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dexter, you would. Anyway, I want you to go back and put things right. It's number 59 we're after. Have you got that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. And I want you to take Piglet and his friend, Mr. Microphone, with you. <laughs> Piglet, sir. Miss Chapman, this is code name. <laughs> yes, I want their every move and everything they say monitored. So what exactly are these two supposed to have done, sir? They have been transmitting coded information to the East Germans. Well, does that really matter? I mean, the situation's completely different since the walls come down. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's different, Piglet, because it's out of our control. Instead of their agents coming over here in dribs and drabs, they're now coming through in coach parties. <laughs> well, so what? I mean, we're all friends now, aren't we? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Piglet. I mean, we're supposed to be friends with the French, but I wouldn't trust them an inch. That's 2.5 centimetres, so we've gone metric. <laughs> oh, do shut up, Dexter, please. Let's get on with it. Lights, please. Now, those of you who have been staking out airports and ferry terminals will already know this face. It's Dieter Frohlig, the man who controls our friends in Hater Street. Our information is that he is coming over to meet them. He's not here yet, sir. Well, he hasn't got past us, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, if by some preposterous chance he does evade your eagle-eyed Truman, then he's likely to turn up at the house. 
That is why I want it watched day and night, right? Good. Well, that'll do. Lights, please. Off you go. And Dexter. Sir. <laughs> Dexter. If you should hear any talk of tea dances, whist drives, or the Women's Institute, it will almost certainly mean you're listening to the wrong house again. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, thanks a lot, Mrs. Russell. Oh, tea. Now, what culinary delights we got in store here today, then? Oh, dear. Sardine. I think you'll find we had sardine yesterday. Look, I'm only paid to clean the house, not wait on you lot hand and foot. I'm 82, you know. Anyway, how long are you people going to be here? You said it was only going to be a day or two. It's been nearly a week now. Believe me, it's not our fault, Mrs Russell. No, those idiot bosses of ours only had us watching the wrong house, didn't they? <laughs> I thought it was strange that you were looking at 49, cos that's where the old ladies live. Who are you looking at now, then? It's not the white list, is it? Number 59. We're not really at liberty to say, Mrs. Russell. Oh, look! What? <laughs> State of their curtains. <laughs> yes, well, thanks a lot, Mrs. Russell. I think we've got all we need now. Uh, uh, is there any chance of a slice of your delicious Dundee cake? No. Sod off! <laughs> What a charming old lady. Puts in mind of Mrs. Danvers, doesn't she? I don't know how the Ashtons put up with her. Don't know how they put up with us, tramping round their house, helping ourselves to their food. Oh, I know. I think they've done the right thing. Go away for a few days, leave us to get on with it. Just wish they'd taken the old biddy with them. Really? 82? Good heavens! Yes. Yeah. No, don't worry, you'll be fully reimbursed. Yes. <laughs> Oh, what an infuriating old woman. <laughs> I'm surprised to see you here, sir. I'm surprised to see you here, Dexter. But I'm supposed to be here, sir. Yes, that's why I'm surprised. <laughs> now, what's the situation? Uh, the Whiteleys are both in the house at the moment, sir. There's no sign of Freulig. Right, well, let's take a look, shall we? Ah. But it all seems fairly quiet. Yes, well, it would, sir. That's 49 you're looking at. <laughs> 59's over there. Oh, it's an easy mistake to make, sir. Oh. <laughs> Here you are, sweetheart. Another slice of my Dundee cake. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Russell. You're spoiling me, you know. So, what's all this about, then? Oh, we're just keeping an eye on some people. What, the Whiteley's across the road? Yes, that's right. I thought it was, only they wouldn't tell me upstairs. Oh. <laughs> so, what the Whiteley's supposed to have done, then? I shouldn't really tell you this. We suspect them of being into black magic. Chocolates? <laughs> no, no, um, devil worship, satanic rites, that sort of thing. They've never asked you to dance naked on their lawn with them, have they? No, I don't think so. Mm. You ever seen them burning candles? Only during the power cuts. <laughs> right. Well, keep your eyes open. And if you ever see them in Sainsbury's cutting the heads off chickens, you let us know. Yes, I will, and... Oh, you, you're pulling my leg. Hello, Piglet. Hello, Piglet. Oh, my God, I'm hearing voices now. It's all right, Mrs Russell, it's just my radio. Don't call me Piglet, Dexter. What's your code name, innit? Yes, I know it is, and I hate it. I don't call you by yours. You don't know mine. I'm not going to tell you either. Do you think I'd have you calling me hippo? <laughs> hippo? <laughs> when you two have quite finished, Piglet, get your stuff together. The subjects have just left home. Right, sir. Yes, and Piglet... Keep in touch, please. Will do, sir. I'm outside the house. At the curbside. I'm looking left and right. <laughs> I'm now crossing the road. Piglet, we can see you're crossing the road. Just get a move on, will you? Sorry, sir. <laughs> I am now inside the house and making my way to the living room. I don't think there'll be... Oh, my God. What is it? Oh, I don't believe it. 
Oh, they've got one of those dreadful lamps with the blobs that float up and down. <laughs> Piglet, you are there to do a job of work, not to take us through the keyhole. Now get on with it. Sorry, sir. I'm planting the bug behind a painting of the green lady. I hate to worry you, sir, but the Whiteleys are back. What? Oh, damn! They must have forgotten something. I am now in the toilet. <laughs> you're bugging the toilet? No. Well, I should hurry up with whatever you're doing, Piglet. The Whiteleys are back. What? They're not going into their own house, sir. They're coming this way. Right, well, look, you warn Piglet while I have a word with Mrs. Russell, the housekeeper. Hello, Piglet. Hello, Piglet. Oh, no, he switched his radio off. Ah, oh, Mrs. Russell, it's the Whiteleys from across the road. Whatever you do, get rid of them as quickly as possible. Thank you. Oh, hello. hello. Is Shirley in or Charles? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. They've gone away for a day or two. Oh, what a pity. We bought Shirley a birthday present. We're just a little something. Oh, that's nice. Shut up. <laughs> we can down the uprises to get them some wine to celebrate. It's Shirley's favourite. Well, perhaps we could leave it all with you. Oh, of course you can. Here, I'm just going to put the kettle on. Do you fancy a cup of tea? <laughs> Come in and sit down. Well, we won't stay long if Shirley and Charles are away. I'm sure the last thing you want is strangers in the house. Mm. Two more won't make any difference. <laughs> Sorry? I'll put the kettle on. That was close. <laughs> I was nearly caught then. <laughs> Proud of your grandson. <laughs> I am, I am. He's a fine boy. And what is it that you do? I'm a teacher. Really? Spreading the good word, eh? Yes. That's the idea. I do a bit of that myself. Sorry? Passing on information. At a price, of course. <laughs> Have a long time. I'm sure Peter doesn't want to hear about all this. Oh, I do. Really, I do. <laughs> no, Christine's quite right. I mustn't talk about work. You know, given half a chance, he'll talk about it for hours. Really? <laughs> well, I'm a good listener. <laughs> so you're helping out your grandma, then? Oh, hardly. No, she died years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, this one? Oh, well, yes, yes, good heavens, yes. Well, <laughs> she's not dead, is she? <laughs> What's going on? I can't hear a thing. It's all muffled. Oh, this is bloody typical. Thousands of pounds worth of bugging equipment and we can't even hear what's going on downstairs. <laughs> it would help if Piglet would switch on one of the mics. Shall I nip downstairs and tell him, sir? Oh, don't be <laughs> stupid, Dick. <laughs> I could rip up a couple of floorboards, sir. Very subtle. <laughs> well, this is nice, but we'd better be going soon. We've got somebody coming round later. Oh, really? Yes, business. Mm -hmm. Another cuppa before you go? Oh, please. What on earth was that? Um, central heating. <laughs> Oops. You clumsy fool, Dexter. It wasn't my fault, sir. It just fell over. Shh, do you think they may have heard downstairs? Well, unless they're having a sing-song or piglets playing the spoons, I should think there's every chance. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Oh, you did hear, then. Sir, you're going to have to come downstairs. They know somebody else is in the house. Why shall I go? No, it's got to be you, sir. It'll check out with the story I've just given them. You. <laughs> Another bourbon? Dad? <laughs> no, thank you. I must say, I can't see much of a family resemblance. Uh, well, I favour my father. He always has done. Like two peas in a pod, they were. Yes, all right, that'll do, Mrs. Russell. 
mother. <laughs> Do you know they were devoted to each other, inseparable they were. Till the old man died, of course. That separated them. Oh, do stop rambling, you stupid old woman. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, 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 Dad. Not in front of the guests. <laughs> He's a cantankerous old sod, but we do love him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Whiteley was saying how he passes on information. For money. Really? Mm. And that he's expecting a visitor this evening. Oh, Mr. Whiteley, do tell me more. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll get a dustpan and brush. Oh. Oh, no, it's all right. You get that. I'll get the dustpan and brush. Right, it's under the sink. Mr. Whiteley, so you're expecting a visitor this evening? Well, it's only my area manager. I sell encyclopedias, you know. The encyclopedias? You may have seen them. The Bendink Collection. Knowledge for all mankind. But I understood that you worked for Hillier West Avionics. No. Oh, you're thinking of Charles Ashton, the man who lives here. He works for Hillier West. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Look what I found. What is it, Piglet? It's a radio transmitter, sir. Piglet? Sir, w what is all this? There's also some one-time code pads and about half a dozen forged passports. I think we've been watching the wrong house. <laughs> Not only have we been watching the wrong house, but we've been watching it from the house that we're supposed to be watching. <laughs> the whole operation compromise. The Ashtons will be safe behind the Iron Curtain and they're sure to have tipped off Dieter Frohlig. Frohlig? Is he a foreigner? Well, he's hardly likely to come from Sidcup with a name like that. <laughs> Only a foreign sandy man just phoned up and he said, is everything all right? I said, it's lovely. So he's coming round. <laughs> he doesn't know the Ashtons have gone. Dexter, Flint! Get your stuff together, we're moving out! And Piglet, put that radio back exactly as you found it. Excuse Mr. Me, Whiteley, sorry. Mrs. Whiteley, I wonder if I may crave a favour. <laughs> well, what are to do? Yes, it's been quite a day. Does this mean you lot have finished, dear now? That's right. Won't be bothering you anymore. I'd best go and straighten up upstairs then. I'm sorry. I did not mean to startle you. The front door was open. Are you Ashton? Me? Um, yes. You shaved off your beard. <laughs> My name is Dieter Fröhlich. Pleased to meet you at last. Yes, indeed. Where's your wife? Oh, she's, um, she's out. Out? But I gave instructions that you should both be here. Oh, that's right. And she'll be back any minute. So who answered the phone? Uh, the housekeeper, Mrs. Russell. She's upstairs, but she'll be off soon. Five cups? Yes, yes. Uh, we were entertaining the neighbours from across the road. Well, as soon as I found out you were coming, I got rid of them. Are they to be trusted? Well, they are now. <laughs> oh, hello. Ah, oh, you must be the cleaning lady. Housekeeper. Are you a friend of my grandson's? Grandson. <laughs> Take no notice, her mind's going, bless her. I'll be off, then. Yes, right you are, Mrs Russell. Bye-bye, dear. Just slam the door when you've finished, dear. <laughs> well, we've been having trouble with the lock. So, to business. There's much I have to show you. It's a waste of time. I bet he doesn't show. <laughs> Good God. All these people work for you. What, us? Yes, it is quite a network. And you must not underestimate your own part in it. In fact, the reason for my trip is to extend your duties. You know about dead letterboxes. Well, we had a few nailed up during the postal strike. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the drops. The exchange of information between contacts. Do you know the routine? No, I don't. Why don't you tell me all about it? Piglet, are you coming over or not? <laughs> what was that? Um, minicabs. No, the stereo picks them up all the time. I've only left the camera and binoculars upstairs. I'll forget me head next. <laughs> Burglars? 
<laughs> In all my years, I have never witnessed such an unbelievable farrago. It was hardly our fault, sir. We were given the wrong house to watch. You were not, Flint. I checked the sheet. The instructions were quite clear. I found them misleading, sir. Probably because they were enjoined up writing, Dexter. <laughs> The way it was written, the 59 did look like a 54. I don't know why you're so upset anyway, sir. I mean, the Ashtons had already done a bunk by the time we arrived. Oh, I see. And you don't think that you're phoning them up and saying, hello, MI5 here, do you mind if we use your house? Might not have had something to do with it. <laughs> Put like that, it might have done, sir. <laughs> Seen him in better moods? Oh, yeah. When? Yes, Lewis, I do want you to stay at the airport. You might catch him on the way back. <laughs> the whole operation has been a complete waste. We've lost to the Ashtons. We've lost Frulik. And more important, we've lost the list of their UK contacts. May I say something, sir? What? Well, this morning, everyone was very dismissive when I tried to demonstrate some of the sophisticated devices available to the department. You in particular, sir, were less than enthusiastic. Is there a point to any of this, Piglet? Oh, indeed there is, sir. We may have lost the Ashtons and Freulig, but his information is safely stored away. Oh, what are you blithering about? This, sir. Uh... A tie clip? Oh, not just a tie clip, sir. This is Mr. Camera. <laughs> it's actually a high-resolution fibre-optic unit fitted with a plain shutter. The motor drive is activated when you just... Yes, all right. The... Well, spare us the technical waffle, please. Do you mean to say that you photographed the list? Every single page, sir. Oh, my dear Piglet. <laughs> my dear boy, I do take my hat off to you. There's no doubt that you have rendered your country an enormous service. Oh, this, Dexter Flint, this is what British intelligence is all about. <laughs> Piglet, if you'll just give me the film, we'll get it processed. <laughs>